Well, happy Monday. Welcome Hello. back. Howdy. Two weeks have passed since we last were together, guys. Mm -hmm. Two long well, weeks. I, uh, I personally, and I think all three of us watched on uh, spin. Uh, on spin on uh, well, if you can read Riley's title up there on uh, on mm, uh, yes somebody's favorite host episode, you know. Uh, yeah, I yeah. think that's a stretch. I don't really think that's <laughs> yeah. true. I think that's fake news. So um, I've only seen him once, so I know I don't have the title. I you know. Well, friends out there in streaming Facebook and YouTube land, welcome. Thank y'all so much for joining us. Episode lucky 13 of Ooh. Southern Gospel wow. 4. 13 is actually seriously my lucky number award in baseball, basketball. That was my number. So uh, it, it's I'm, I'm seeing this as being a very lucky show. So hey, here, I wore that here. number in basketball too, so. Perfect. All right. Well, we have got an outstanding guest with us today, but like we do, uh, we're going to take care of a few things right quick and talk about some folks who sponsor Southern Gospel Forward. So right out of the gate, we have Ex Nihilo Media, and uh, they have been sponsoring us for, since we started having sponsors, and we thank them for that. Uh, digital media, digital uh, design and print, and event photography, they are best in the business. If you're looking for that, go to www.exnihilomedia or exnihilo.media, excuse me, and look them up. Uh, you, won't, you won't go wrong with the Mill sisters. Also, we have a returning sponsor, the Lawson family. Go to lawsonsmusic.com and you can find their tour schedule and their booking information. And uh, we greatly appreciate the Lawsons, who's been sponsoring us for, I think, about four episodes now. So thank you all so much mm -hmm. for sponsoring us. And then we got a new sponsor. It is Crimson River Ministries. They have been promoting concerts over 34 years, and they've got a concert coming up on Friday, April 12th at 7 p.m., at Taylor's Valley Baptist Church in Temple, Texas, Gold City Quartet and Master's Voice Quartet, two of the finest in the business. And uh, they are actually partnering with us so closely with this sponsorship that if you go to CrimsonRiverMinistries.com to order your ticket for the concert, you can use coupon code FORWARD and you receive $5 off of your ticket. So we thank them for that sponsorship. And these are not necessarily sponsors, but we'd like to give a shout out. Uh, we are all things Southern Gospel here. The Southern Gospel Music Association, uh, we think highly of and very involved with. And uh, you can go to sgma.org and for $20, become a member of the Southern Gospel Music Association. Uh, your membership fee helps uh, procure the museum and all the artifacts in the museum in Pigeon Forge. And also with your membership, you get to nominate those to be inducted each year into the Hall of Fame. And then I want to give a shout out to NQC, a couple of events coming up, NQC Spring Break happening April 11th through 12th, 24. That's at the LeConte Center in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. Put that on your calendars. And then the granddaddy of them all, uh, September 22nd through 28th, 2024, again at the LeConte Center, Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, the National Quartet Convention, seven days of uh, full evening concerts and four of those days have full showcases in the afternoon. Uh, just the granddaddy of them all. You don't want to miss that. So join us at the National Quartet Convention. And then hey. finally, we have one individual sponsor for tonight's show. And this is another regular sponsor. We appreciate Daniel Hayes for sponsoring us. Riley Fireworks. Yes. Yeah. yes. <laughs> fireworks for Daniel. That's what I'm talking about. Thank you so much. These sponsorships mean a lot to us, y'all. Um, yes, yes. Again, we have talked to y'all. We're trying to get the budget up to go to the NQC and do a few other things that we want to do with Southern Gospel Forward. And, uh, you know, one thing you can do right now is share. If you're watching mm -hmm. this on Facebook, would you click share and share with your friends? Share with your enemies. Who's your friends on Facebook? You know, we all have uh, you know, <laughs> Facebook friends. So we really I figured this out on YouTube. I figured what? this out on YouTube. You can go in. You can get the link. You can text it, you can mm -hmm. email yeah. it, you can send it, you can Snapchat it, Instagram it, tweet it, whatever y'all do. Uh, but go get on YouTube, send it out, send it out, like like yeah. really send it to everywhere. Your that don't have social media. Yeah, right. and, 
and and that's big because YouTube, we need about 200 more subscriptions to get to the number we need to get to. And we'll have that, that many watch us before this thing is over with the night for sure. So we need y'all mm -hmm. would just go to SBM Studios on YouTube and subscribe and hit that notifications and you'll catch us. But thank y'all so much for being so good to us and uh, supporting us. And I am looking forward to this episode. And I think what I'm going to do right now is not delay any longer and turn it over to Evan to bring on our guest. So this guy right here, I've been a big Perry's fan for as long as I can remember. The Perry's are a lot of the reason that I love Southern gospel music. And when Libby Perry, Libby Perry stuff will hire this guy. She really did the job. I'm telling you, Dayton can knock it out of the park every single night on stage. And uh, you haven't lived until you've seen this guy sing a note. So uh, please welcome my friend, Mr. Dayton Gay. Hello. <laughs> How are y'all? I told you, man, I, I set the bar high. I even had yeah, applause, did. man. I had the whole, the whole crowd. The crowd went wild. That's, that's insane. <laughs> <laughs> Dayton, we thank you so much for taking I know this is an off day for you and uh, you're taking your personal time to share with us and we thank you so much well I appreciate you so much for having me on I'm excited about this yeah we I have been too looking forward to it for what, we've had this on for about seven to ten days something like that <laughs> I tell you what we do a lot of times it's just um, uh, a lot of folks may not know you a lot of folks probably do know you that's watching but if you will take a moment and just act like you're brand new to anybody watching and just tell a little bit about yourself introduce yourself and just give your background and just uh, whatever you want to say to start us off all right. Well, uh, my name is Dayton Gay, uh, if that wasn't obvious already. And um, I am 24 years old. I've been married for three years to my beautiful, lovely wife, Katie. Uh, we live in Brownsville, Tennessee, uh, about 45 minutes east of Memphis. And um, I've been singing my whole life, pretty much. I started singing uh, Southern gospel music with my family. We had a local group uh, when I was, well, I, I first started when I was three years old, sang my first song on a stage. Uh, and then after that, the older gentleman that was singing with my mom and my aunt, he actually, he passed away. Um, but by that time I learned harmony. And so they allowed me to come on the road with them. So I started singing on the weekends with them when I was seven um, did that from seven to 17, so 10 years. And, and then I, I went to college um, at Bethel University. Uh, and I was in the Renaissance program under the, under the direction of Matthew Holt, who used to play piano for the Perrys, mm -hmm. uh, now plays piano for Bill Gaither and the Gaither Vocal Band. Um, and got the job with the Perrys, uh, uh, filling in uh, during 2020 after Andrew mm -hmm. and Troy left the group. Uh, filled in with them for about a year, year and a half, and then Scott came along, uh, accepted the job. Uh, but then when Scott left, Libby called me back, um, and I was happy to come back. Um, so here I am. Yes, it, I was. I was there the first. I think I was there both first. Your first night filling in, and then your first night with them um, as like a full on member. Wow, so I've got to see kind of the whole. The whole experience and it's been the awesome evolution. Yeah. Well, I, I'm for as far as for the the ones the concerts a few years ago. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> no, <laughs> it's been a lot of a lot of growth uh, vocally and uh, maturity wise since then. But anyway, well, Nathan, I'm looking forward to really getting to know you. Um, I've watched you a lot, seen you, and then I've watched you on the, a lot of the stuff on YouTube and all that. But I'm looking forward to uh, kind of being a fan tonight and just learning a little bit more about you. And I think that uh, our crew has got some questions lined up. I know some of our Southern Gospel Forward group has sent in some questions as well. So I'm going to let y'all get started with that, guys. Awesome. Um, So you've already kind of went along the lines of how you got started singing, but um, what was like that big moment of like, you knew you wanted to do Southern gospel more so for a living instead of just, you know, kind of doing it, you know, in church and such. Um, okay. So that's tough because like I said, I've, I've been singing my whole life and I've always enjoyed it. 
Um, and even when I wasn't singing like Southern gospel on the weekends with the family group, I, I sang in church um, from the time I was very young to up, up till now. Um, but as far as one moment when I knew this is what I wanted to do actually happened much later. Uh, and it happened when I was 17 and I went to uh, the Renaissance choir show that was in Covington, Tennessee, which was about 15 minutes from where I lived at that time. Um, and Matthew, Matthew Holt had the Renaissance quartet and the choir there that night. So I went and I watched the choir and the quartet. And I was sitting there and honestly, I had my entire life planned out at that point and it was not at all what it ended up being. Uh, I was going to go to a completely other school, a different school. Um, I was going to study youth ministry, um, not because I felt called to do that, but that's just what people in my environment were doing. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's what I felt I was supposed to do. Um and, and, and I've, I've always been into ministry in any sense of the word, um, whether it was music or not. Um, so I honestly and I truly believed that that's what I was going to do. Um, I was going to go there, get the youth ministry degree, serve in a church um, and live where that college was instead of where I'm at. Uh, but then I went to that concert and I was sitting there thinking as the Renaissance Quartet was performing, I was sitting there thinking, well, these guys get scholarships to do this. And then I had a second thought. I'm like, what, people who are out of college, they get paid to do this. And I, I love doing this. People make a living doing this. Um, and I thought it was super cool. I wasn't all in yet. Um, after the concert, I went to their table, the, the Renaissance Quartet's table, and Matthew Holt was there. And I told him, I said, I'm a huge fan. It would be an honor for me if you would play something while I sang. If you could just play play the piano and let me sing something with you playing, that would just be a dream come true. And he said, well, come on and let's do it. So we went to the piano there after the concert was over and I, I sang it as well. Um, and he, he started playing and he said, you can sing. He said, and then he called the alto over for the group, and he said, sing with her. So I sang exactly what I sang again, and um, she said, okay, now she's going to sing melody. You pick something else. Um, And so I I sang harmony under her, and what I didn't know at that time was that he was auditioning me, Um, Mm -hmm. but he was auditioning me. Uh, When we got done with that, he said, you're really cool. Um, I really like your voice. I I like some of the choices you made with the harmony uh, without me having to tell you to do them. He said, here's the deal. Our lead singer graduates this May. Uh, This was, I think, um, this was in September. So it would have been the next May. Um, So I went and he said, the lead singer graduates this May, this upcoming May. If you will come this upcoming spring semester, starting in January, um, when he graduates, I would like for you to step into that position. And I said, that's really cool, but I, I, I kind of have everything planned out. I'm, I'm going to this other school. I'm studying something completely different. And he said, well, you do know I will scholarship you to sing Southern gospel music. And I said, I didn't, I didn't realize that fully. And then he's like, this is, he, he gave me some numbers. And I said, okay, I'll do it. Um, and since then, <laughs> since I went to the school and since I got into the program, it really, it lit the fire in me that that's what I wanted to do with my life. Um, and I, I didn't go to college to study music per se. I did, uh, music production, which is more so studio work and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, not necessarily vocals, but yeah, that, that was the moment I was sitting in that audience looking at these guys do what I loved doing. And then after it, Matthew, it was almost like God put it in my lap and said, if you ignore this, I don't know what, you know. Wow. So I, I felt like I couldn't ignore it. And that's what I did. And that's how it happened. Yeah. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. 
So Evan talked about meeting you in, was that 2020? I think we met you filling in with the Perrys. But when we mm-hmm. saw you, we re- uh, my mom and I realized we had seen you a lot earlier than that. And I think you were with um, your wife's group, her family, mm-hmm. group, right? The Barnett family. Yes. Yes. We had seen them in the Jasper area, the, and they would come every year to this homecoming that we would go oh, yeah. and see with the Page Trio. Do you remember them at all? Yes. Yes. No, I, I've, I've been to that exact concert kids. with them. Yes. Yeah. So we were in, we we remembered. We were like, we've seen this guy before. <laughs> we've seen him at this little homecoming. This yeah. is awesome to see him here now because we remember thinking you were great way back then and your wife sings too, right? Mm-hmm. She does. And she's she, uh, fantastic. Yes, she is. She she's is. absolutely fantastic. And her family is just amazing prayer warriors. I remember being a little kid and thinking they are amazing people. They, their spirit is are we still there? Hello. I don't know what happened. Freeze. I can hear you now. I okay. Yeah, you're, you're, you're y'all froze bit. for a second. I don't know yeah. what happened. Um, anyway, I remember uh, a video going viral of you seeing with the group and seeing like thousands of people watch that. And I yeah. was like, oh my God. This is yeah, so, so when, when I gave my, uh, my little rundown about how long I'd been singing and, and everyone I sang with, I kind of gave the the cliff notes version. Um, but I, I did sing, I sang with my wife's family, the Barnett family, uh, in total, um, both before and after filling in with the Perry's for probably two years, um, sang with them a year before and a year after. Um, and I also sang with a, a group from around here called highway 22. Um, and that highway 22 video was the one that went, uh, viral. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I remember seeing that and seeing it going around and thinking, wow, this is awesome. Yeah, and what you what you said about about Katie's uh, family, I can honestly say this, and I promise I'm not just kissing up because they're my in-laws, <laughs> but they are, no, they're they are amazing. probably some of the sweetest and godliest people mm-hmm. that I've ever met. Um, they'll do absolutely anything in the world for you, um, and I'm, I'm blessed to be a part of this family. Yes. I, I love her family, yes. And I think what we probably might need to do is get Riley to shoot in with a question. And we may need to get, I think Evan and Avery may be having a little Wi-Fi yeah, issue. Yeah, real quick. So, yeah. Riley, why don't you take it away? Okay. So, um, let's talk about a bit about your influences. Who are, one of the questions we had in the group was, Who's the role model in gospel music you looked up to most and why? And maybe someone who has taken time to encourage you and um, since you've become a part of the industry. <sighs> okay. So th- that's a two, that's a two part answer mm-hmm. for me. Um, and again, I promise I'm not kissing up. I mean this <laughs> from the bottom of my heart and I have, I have told her this from my mouth. Um, so this, this shouldn't be a surprise to her, but Libby Perry Stuffle is the biggest role model for me, um, both in the industry and as a, just as a Christian and as a, as a spouse, uh, and as, as a mother. (laughs) Um, and I, I've told her that, um, in the industry, I have never, I have never experienced her deal with. Uh, unfairly with someone mm-hmm. um, and that's to be respected um, but honestly beyond that just her character as a person and as a Christian um, I, I look up to her highly I highly look up to her mm-hmm. and, and all the stuff that happened with Tracy and we won't get into it because um, I'm sure most of the people that watch this probably followed that story just like I did when it was happening um, Yeah. But you think about her entire life. I mean, the Tracy ordeal, but she also, she lost two two children mm-hmm. um, with Tracy. Mm-hmm. She lost uh, two brothers when she was, when she was a child. Um, mm-hmm. She lost both of her parents uh, and she has persevered through that and has never, her, her testimony has never wavered. Um, she has always maintained her Christian testimony. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I look up to that. I look up to that so much. 
uh, I, I've told her if I can be half the spouse that you were to Tracy, I'll be doing pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, and one day, hopefully, when me and my wife have children, if I can be half the mother that you have been to Jared, I'll be doing pretty good. Um, she really is just truly not only an icon in this industry, I fully believe, but just a godly Christian woman uh, that anyone can look up to. Um, in the industry, aside from her, someone who has always been encouraging to me, even before I was in the industry, is Gary Casto. Um, and I've never had the opportunity to tell him that face to face. We've always, since I've been in the industry, we've just kind of been in passing. We'd be at concerts, but we're both busy. Um, but even before that, I went, when I was in school, I went to a tribute quartet concert that was in Dyersburg, Tennessee. Uh, so I drove from McKenzie to Dyersburg and I went and saw them and he knew me specifically because a girl that was in the quartet that I was in, uh, took, uh, I'm not sure how it works, vocal training or vocal lessons from him, Mm -hmm. uh, at Steve, her school of music when Mm -hmm. she had went and she apparently had just sung my praises, uh, (laughs) which I was not comfortable (laughs) with, but she did. Um, so I showed up and he, he recognized me just from me being with her and, and hearing my name, um, and said that she had showed him, um, the, the quartet CD that we had done and that he was, he, he was very encouraging to me even then. Uh, and, and even since then, every time he's seen me, he tells me, you know, you're doing a great job. Just keep doing what you're doing. And someone who doesn't really know me personally to pour into me like that, just because I'm a young artist and he sees me trying my best. That means a lot to me. Yeah. Gary's the real deal. He, uh, and he is an encourager for sure. Um, to our viewers that are watching live, y'all know, and you know, this has happened a few times before we've, we've had some, uh, fun in internet land, I think with our connections, but I think we're cleared up. I'm getting some, um, I'm getting a little bit of distortion on, on my end. I think me talking. So I'm going to try to talk less and let my young host do most of the question asking but we do want to get to the comments right quick and Mm -hmm. let's see who we've got jumping on with us and saying howdy may have a question or two in here matthew mays a regular viewer we thank him for Mm -hmm. being with us again aaron swain this is he says it's his favorite part of the week thank you aaron for joining us and hanging out with us megan one of our uh, regulars as well good to have Mm -hmm. you with us again and Mal Mallory, Coach Coach Mal, he's with us. Thank you for joining us. Hannah Bradford, I think uh, over in uh, some of our host neck of the woods, uh, she is watching, and we appreciate that. Zachary Wilburn's on. Thanks, buddy, for joining us. He's known about he's known about this episode since before we even booked it with Dayton. <laughs> He's like, he's like, who are y'all getting on next? I was like, well, I've talked to Dayton a lot, and he's like. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Johnny Parrish, hello all and Riley. Oh, well, Riley gets his own hello. Goodbye, bye. It's she's like one of she's she's one of my concert grand grandma, so <laughs> okay, okay. I, what else you got here, producer? Oh, well, here's a good one. Check this one out. And yes, we want to give a shout out to Miss Avery because this past uh, she filled in f- uh, for the Chet Wagon Gang and did an awesome job on the alto part. And yes, Aaron she did. Gave his kudos. I know you had a blast. It was fun. Brother Nicholas Wilkie, my boy. In the house. Thanks for joining. The man, us, the myth, the legend. The legend, Olivia Solomon. Good to see mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Yeah. Producer Jason's wife always hanging out with us. Rachel, well, thank you for watching. Appreciate that. And we're just, oh, he won't. Oh, Aaron wants to sing like Dayton when he grows up. Just keep <laughs> You are too buddy. kind, Aaron. I'm going to punch you in the arm when I see you again for <laughs> saying that. <laughs> That's my aunt. Uh huh. I, oh, yeah. I was going to let you handle that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you, Miss Susan, for joining us. You don't know that guy, do you? <laughs> oh, unfortunately, I do. <laughs> Jason, thanks for joining us. 
<laughs> Can't Shut believe up. he's not wearing the tie. <laughs> they give me they they give me so much grief for wearing ties when they don't. I just like I like ties. Just give him grief about the lady giving him milk on on the cruise or whatever that whole I story will. was. I will. About. Oh, I've got plenty of ammunition after that cruise. <laughs> I, I promise you. Here's a we'll, we'll go ahead and throw out this is a two parter question from the peanut gallery. Megan wants to know your favorite Bible verse and your favorite Perry song that you've whether you've sung it yet or not. Okay, um, so I I have two favorite Bible verses, and I know that's kind of cheating, oh. um, but <laughs> two of them are for different reasons. Um, one for a while that I said was my all time favorite was um, Daniel 318 which is, uh, but if not, be it known unto you, O king, that we will not um, worship the golden image which you have set up uh, or something like that. Uh, and it's just having enough faith in God to believe that he will deliver you. And even if he doesn't, if it's in his will for you to perish, that's OK. Um, I, I love that verse. And I've, I've heard many sermons about that one verse. Um, and I, I just love it. It's an all time favorite verse. Another one is uh, Ephesians Three twenty through twenty one, uh, which is um, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, mm -hmm. uh, to him be all glory and, and power and, and so on and so forth. Um, and to me, that's a promise verse. Um, yes. If you think that your dreams or, or whatever you have in mind for your life is too big, uh, give it to God and watch what happens. Um, mm -hmm. I love that verse. Yeah. Uh, favorite Perry song is, um, although I don't do it justice, and honestly, it's one that I practice a lot because I'm not comfortable with how I sing it. But um, wish I, I wish I could have been there. Oh, it's yeah. my favorite Perry song mm -hmm. to sing. That's the song that got me hooked. It's it's a lot of words, man, and it's been done. Yeah. It's been done so many times that it's yeah. hard to do anything original with it, which is why I struggle with it. <laughs> um, but mm -hmm. I, I, I love it. You always knock it out of the park. Oh, it's always. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the reason why it's so iconic as a a, a as a concert closer. Oh yeah, because it's mm -hmm. that iconic of a song. You, oh yeah, you know? I and I dare say I'd put it up there with some others. Oh, there he is. <laughs> ah, I was waiting. A land canal. <laughs> Our so favorite. First time you said to self, bam, this is it. I'm not sure what he means. <laughs> we well, never do. <laughs> that is a running theme for the questions from Brother Kendall when he uh, pontificates on our commentary here. Um, you just got to go with it. So actually, you got a very kind question. Some of yeah, that said, one that one was a little bit more readable. Just wait till he asks you about mm -hmm. the state of Fredonia, or, you know. <laughs> Austin Alvey. Got to stand next to Nate my neighbor. for a couple months. That's a good man right there. Ooh. That's my buddy. Yeah, thank you, Austin, for joining us and for chiming in. All right. And I think we've called up again. You know, y'all keep commenting. We can't get to every. Oh, one person put in the comments, and we didn't throw this up there, but I'm going to get back with you. But asking about how you can sponsor Southern Gospel yes, Forward. Mm -hmm. um, we always put that out uh, when we have an episode. Uh, we do sponsorships for individuals, and, and we got a message the other day talking about how cheap that it really wasn't sponsorships because it was just not much when we reached the number that we reach, and that's okay. We're wanting to do this very. We we're just trying to build a little small budget, but we're also wanting to make it low to partner with folks and to, for folks to partner mm -hmm. with us. So ten bucks an individual, you can have your name show up like we did on the scroll. And then for 25 bucks, we'll throw your image up there and, uh, and and let you as your ministry or business, as long as the business agrees with our what we're doing here, um, you can do that for 25 bucks. And we take Venmo and PayPal and eggs and chickens and, and just about any way you want to pay for it. Was it? But um, I'll contact you um, in the comments specifically. Yes. But y'all, y'all will just be watching for that. All right, let me get out of the way here and let y'all have another round of questions. Is it my turn? Yes, your turn. I never can remember if it's my turn or not to ask a question. Um, so I'm gonna get this one quick and over early. Uh, it's feel like forever since I have to since I've asked this question, but it's kind of my recurring question. 
Uh, I've been around the Perry's bus for a long time, and I know that y'all like to snack on the bus. So what is your favorite road <laughs> trip snack? Uh, I, honestly, honestly, I'm not much of a snacker. And I know, like, and you can look at me and probably think I'm lying, but I, I'm not much of a snacker. If I'm going to eat, I, I, I want a meal. Um, That's respectable. But if I had, if I had to pick one, uh, and Jason Gordon, if you're still watching, you got me on this, and I will never forgive you. Um, he always has, always, either Oreos or Chips Ahoy cookies on the bus somewhere. <laughs> and I'm going to be honest when it, when it's after a, a night concert and you're on your way to the next mm. venue and it's, you know, 11 PM midnight and you're like, man, those cookies look good. That's, <laughs> and he always has milk as well. And he's willing to share. It. So, um, Isn't that, it like if, a vocal, if I had, it's like a vocal no, no to drink milk. I've always heard that. Mm -hmm. So that's why you do it after the concert. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I haven't asked um, Jason that because he's the one singing professionally and not me. So yeah. Um, but if I had if I had to pick one, it would be that because I he'll he'll whip out the chips ahoy and his half gallon of milk. Um, half gallon and I, of I, milk. I will partake with it. <laughs> respect to that, Jason. I'll I'll bring you I'll bring you some <laughs> chips ahoy. In. Do you like uh is it well here's a real question. When you say chips ahoy, do you like the chewy, the crunchy, okay. the he likes the crunchy, so that's the ones I eat. Because, like I said, I don't buy snacks for me. Right. Um, but if I were going to buy Chips Ahoy, I would buy the Chewy. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Mm. And all the, choir, all, all the choir said no. amen. No. <laughs> really? put, put it in the comments. Which one do y'all like, Chewy or Crunchy? <laughs> Let's get a debate going. My question is what kind of milk? 2%. 2%. <laughs> No. Whole? I like two percent milk. So uh, he okay. So Jason's thing. He drinks. Jason drinks a lot of milk, like a lot of milk, more <laughs> milk than I'm comfortable with. Um, How does he sing every night? Uh, well, he like I said, he does it mostly. He does it after um, or when oh. we're not going to be singing for a considerable amount of time. Um, so Dr Jason drinks a lot of milk, and so his reasoning is for not doing whole milk because he does prefer whole milk. Uh, he, he, th he thinks he would put on like 20 pounds easy. <laughs> There's the comment. actually yep. did whole milk with the amount that he drinks. So <laughs> I'm going to go grab some cookies. I'll be right back. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> what did he say? Oh yeah. The Jason coffee says... count. Does call. I, I will say. Oh. What happened? <laughs> Frozen. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. Anyway, Your question. My question. Why'd you just I don't know, stop? Because I thought everybody else froze. I didn't want to interrupt. Goodness okay. gracious. I thought we froze again. I was like, what's going on? Um, I was going to take it back on a, a, a more serious note of knowing you before the parries of things people may not okay. have known was I remember a prayer chain going around for you mm -hmm. after a car wreck. Do you mind yes. telling us that but God story? Because that just... If it don't send chills, yeah. you might need to uh, so, check up. Like I said, when I when I accepted the offer to go to uh, Bethel University, um, I get there and it was it was my first semester at school. Um, so I, I had turned eighteen by this point, and me and a few friends that I had made, we were going to a bluegrass jamboree, is what it was called, and it was out in the middle of nowhere. Um, so we had to use a GPS to get there. Um, we get there, had a good time. We actually, we sang a few that night on stage. They heard us singing backstage and invited us on. Um, mm. so we, we did that and it was fun. We left and put it, put campus back into the GPS. And I always say just kind of, a, kind of as a joke, but I also kind of believe it a little bit. Uh, because GPSs are made by Satan himself, it sent us a completely different direction to get back to school. Um, so we were on a road that we had never been on. We didn't know. It was late. Um, we get to the top of a hill, and there's no sign to tell us that there is a stop sign at the bottom of the hill. Mm -hmm. So we're going the speed limit, but we get down there, see the stop sign. Everybody in the car yells, stop, stop, stop. So my buddy Nick, he was driving. 
Uh, he slams on the brakes, but it's an older car, so it kept rolling. And we roll into oncoming traffic, and we get hit on the driver's side, which uh, me and Nick were, I was behind him, um, get hit on that side by a pickup truck that was going 62 miles an hour. Um, so our car slides across the, the lane, and we go through the median and end up on the other side of the highway. Um, my buddies Andy and Alex that were on the other side, they get out, and they go find help. Um, this is another thing. I don't know if you've ever heard this part of the story because I try to keep it short on stage. Um, just as luck would have it, and it's not even luck, it's God. We were one mile away from the local hospital. Hmm. So hmm. as soon wow. as it happened, someone saw it and they called hmm. the hospital. Ambulance were on the scene almost immediately. Um, and they were checking us out and they saw that my wrist was broken and that I had some glass in my forehead. Uh, but that was all they could see. But they said, just as a precaution, because we don't really have the equipment here to check you out the way we need to, we're going to life flight you and Nick to uh, Vanderbilt uh, in Nashville. So we get there and realize that I have a ton of internal injuries. Um, I, I was septic. Mm -hmm. my, my intestines had torn. Uh, my pelvis was shattered. I, I had a, a brain hemorrhage. Um, my eye was busted. Um my obviously my, again my my wrist was i actually have a scar but i always wear something on it to cover it up but um i have a scar there where they had to sew my mm -hmm. uh hand back on um mm -hmm. i had a lot of injuries and um they told my parents when my parents got there they they said you know is he going to be okay and they said we don't know and we can't tell you um the second day came um, I was pretty stable the first night. I was banged up, but I was pretty stable. Um, the second day came, I wasn't stable at all. They couldn't keep me stable. Mm -hmm. My vitals kept dropping. Um, they kept having to go in, and it was an emergency situation every single time it happened. Um, and then my parents asked again, and they said, we don't know, but it doesn't look good. Um, mm -hmm. So that's when my parents, uh, my mom and my aunt, actually, they created that that Facebook page and that prayer chain. Uh, and all of a sudden thousands upon thousands of people I had never met were praying for me. Including our family. Um, before, before we even knew. Yes. Were... And, and it's crazy. Mm. I I've been singing. Um, like I said, I've been singing my whole life. And, and since then, you know, that, that was, I was 18. So I'm 24 now math six years ago. Um, mm -hmm. Since then people have, come to whatever product table I was at and tell, Hey, I prayed for you. And it's like, I've never met you. Oh, I know, but I've seen you and I prayed for you. Mm -hmm. And that's awesome. Um, I through a lot of prayer and a lot of surgeries. Um, I did come through it and I couldn't, I, I was in a wheelchair for about six months um, until my pelvis healed. And um, I had a colostomy bag for six months after that uh, until my intestines healed enough where they could connect it back. Um, and, you know, it just to show you how God works, if you didn't know that story, you wouldn't know. Never know. Because yeah. I can walk just fine. Um, everything that I deal with is so minute in comparison to what it could have been that the only way you can say I ended up as well as I did is just God. The fact that I survived mm -hmm. is just God. The fact that I can walk around and I can talk and I can sing. They but one of the first questions I asked was, would I still be able to sing? Because I, I knew from the amount of surgeries that I had had that they had been shoving tons of tubes down my throat. And that can cause a lot of damage. Um, and they said, we don't know. Probably not. You'll be lucky if you'll be able to talk in a few months. Um, and to have, to, I, to have a career singing, doing what I love, um, walking and, and having life and breath in my lungs to tell that story to people is nothing but God, yeah. mm -hmm. nothing but God. Mm. I love that story. So I was like, he, we have to tell that story. Cause I feel like a lot of people don't know that. Mm -hmm. Like you said, it's right. six years ago. People don't know that part. Just looking at you. Yeah. Yeah. So thank awesome. you I love sharing. every opportunity I have to share that. Yeah. I'm kind of continuing with that. Is there a song or a particular song or anything that uh, was comforting to you or encouraging to you during that time? Yes. Um, 
is probably it's gonna it's gonna sound strange um, to the Southern gospel fanatics because it is not Southern gospel. Um, <laughs> but it is gospel. Shirt on. It is gospel. I'll say that. Um, but Smokey Norfolk, he wrote a song called God is Able. Um, and he wrote it because, uh, and I love to hear him tell this story. You should look, it's on YouTube. Look up uh, Smokey Norfolk. It'll be a picture of him in a, like a fedora thing. Uh, and the background looks kind of beige because he's in a, he's in a room with a choir. Um, he, he tells the story. Uh, doctors had told him and his wife that they would never be able to have children. Uh, but through prayer uh, and years and years of trying, they did. Um, and then, but they, they wanted, they, they wanted lots of kids. They wanted more than one. Um, so he, w he came home from work one day and his son, his toddler, uh, his son at that time ran into the room holding a positive pregnancy test and <laughs> saying, daddy, daddy, I'm going to be a big brother. <clears throat> and I love it. I get, I get choked up. I get excited every time I hear him say it, but he said, he was saying, daddy, I'm going to be a big brother, but all I could hear is God is able. And so he went down to his basement where he wrote his songs and he wrote God is able uh, something I don't tell I've, my mom, my wife, um, my roommate from college at that time. And I've told Jason this story. Those are the only people I've ever told. So you get exclusive access mm -hmm. to this. But every single time I had uh, an appointment for a follow up to a surgery or another surgery, or uh, x-rays, MRIs, anything. On the way to the hospital, I would listen to that song on repeat. Hmm. And then when I went, and inevitably, because God is good and God was faithful to me, when I got good answers for that and uh, positive results, um, I would play it on repeat all the way back to, hmm. to, to home or campus or whatever. Um, so God is able by Smokey Norfolk. Amazing. That is awesome. Amen. It, you just just as I'm not trying to get it on Perry's business, but if any of the three, uh, if any of the other three are listening, or if producers listening, y'all should cut that and let you let you. So it's funny. It. I I told Jason that story a few weeks ago, and his immediate he said we should <laughs> sing that song. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> just got to get Boss Lady in on I it. Can't. You know? I can't sing that song, not only because of the emotional, but I just, I, it's, if you hear it, you would understand. It's completely not a song I could sing, but yeah. it's good. It's really good. It is my turn. I'm telling you, I cannot remember yes. my turn ever. <laughs> um, so, so with your, your testimony, was there ever a moment, you know, that like you can, relate in your your gospel life to like someone in the audience who's had a similar testimony have you ever had a situation like that where someone uh you know a son or a daughter a mother or a brother had had a a, a, a like a wreck or, or something like that happened to them has your story ever been you know touching to someone like that and kind of helped them through it happens um it happens all the time uh and but it i don't share that testimony every time we sing Mm -hmm. Um, and look, I don't know whether this is an admonishment for the people watching or if it's just something that we all understand. Um, there are audiences and congregations, uh, that are not as receiving to, um, testimonies mm -hmm. and actually right. being spiritual, uh, as, as some others are. And that's fine. People worship differently. And right. that's something that you learn when you do this for a, a little bit. Um, so there are some situations in which it would be it, it would be a waste of it would be a waste of time to to take that much time explaining something. Um, other situations where I have had the freedom and I felt uh, the Holy Spirit move me to do that. Um, inevitably, there's at least one person every time that comes to the table and right. says they have a similar story or a, even something else, uh, a completely different story, but in the same way that they knew only God could get them through it. Um, and they will share that with me. And it's always, it's always touching to me because I naturally I'm an introverted person and I don't, I know I, I try not to come across that way. 
Um, and I try to be talkative, especially in formats like this. But um, every time I, I open up and I share that part of my testimony to have someone come to me and say that helped me. Uh, those verses you mentioned helped me. The words that you said helped mm -hmm. me. It's always an encouragement to me. Uh, so I guess to answer your question a little bit more forwardly, it was, uh, I would say at least three times a month of concerts, at That's least awesome. three times a month, someone comes. Yes, sir. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, I'm going to shift gears and kind of go back to our regular questions now that we get that out of the way. And uh, we can be a little more uh, lighthearted, I think, from here on out. I mean, I love the sphere. I I'm love sorry. <laughs> no, no. I think it's absolutely beautiful. Yes. But um, I am going to ask some questions that I normally ask, just because I think they're fun to ask. Um, so if you could travel with a group that is now retired or former, they're no longer on the road, who would it be and why? The cathedrals. Um, and because <laughs> to me, we need to keep a cathedral tally. <laughs> to me, that was uh, that was the pinnacle of yeah. of male quartet. And as far as southern gospel, what I consider southern gospel, that's that's the pinnacle. And just to just to um, not even the music part of it, but to travel with guys like George Yunts and uh, Glenn yeah. Payne. Absolutely. would be right. awesome because you, yeah. you hear people who did travel with them talk so highly of them and yeah. just even to know them in that way mm -hmm. would be amazing so the cathedrals i don't think a lot of people realize that at one time you had danny funderburg who's a hall of famer mm -hmm. mark trammell who's a hall of famer oh. glenn glenn payne who is a hall of famer Jer or, uh, george johns who's a hall of famer uh, I, I mean the whole lineup we're all Hall of Famers. You can even throw guys like Gerald in there. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. consistently, it, it, they, they've all had Hall of Famers. It was like someone time. looked at a Southern Gospel roster and put together an all-star team. Right. And it was, <laughs> and it's just those guys. They yep. were that good. So well, I'm going to do another question from the group. What's a song that was a hit for someone else that you wish – or the Perrys in general could have snagged up first. Okay, so I, I read that. I cheated. I, I looked. At <laughs> um, I read that when they commented it, um, mm -hmm. and I did write it down. Uh, but since then, I actually on my way to work today, I heard a song, and I was like, I might have to change my answer. Um, but my original answer was "Watch and See" by Tony Gore and Majesty, Ooh. and only because mm -hmm. I. I constantly catch myself singing that song and it's beautiful. I mean, just the, the, uh, how it was arranged in general, but the words of it and the media just taking you from the garden all the way to after he uh, mm -hmm. resurrected mm -hmm. uh, and then see him come in clouds of glory, watch him take his church away. Uh, and also uh, Katie's family, the Barnetts, they sang that. And so it's that. ever yeah, that's present where I've heard from. Yeah. in my mind. Uh, Cause I can hear uh, Papa Royce singing it yes uh, but anyway that and then also but that was recorded probably 40 years before i was born and no not not 40 maybe 30 um, so uh, gold gold city lord of life is another one i would say yeah yeah a little bit more current that's a good one mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. i think you could record a lot of the jonathan wilburn era gold city stuff You've got again this see you're you're setting expectations. Oh, I know you're just that's such a powerful lead that like that's there there's like lead singers and then there's like powerful lead singers and you you have that 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 stuff. And I'm not saying other lead singers aren't good cuz I I say a smooth lead singer is just as good as a powerful lead singer. Yes. But the way that I am, I you know, love seeing a guy get up there and look like a stick of dynamite on stage. You know, oh, that's yeah. just that's awesome. And me. Jonathan Wilburn could do that and still does. Right. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm being a little quiet because I'm being told that I'm distorting a little bit out there. So maybe this isn't bad. I'm going to stay back from the mic. But a couple of quick things. I'm good right now, Scott. Good deal. First good. of all, um, I'm, I am was noticing, I think it was from your email address or something in the year. So <laughs> like 99, is that your, when the year you were born? Yeah, I'm a baby. 
Yeah, that ticks me off. But anyway, <laughs> um, so yeah, and then you talk about forty years ago with Tony. Come no, on, it, man. it wasn't forty years ago when that no. song came out in like the eighties. So yeah, it, did. it was it was probably hey, like it's, you know, it's yeah, I'm, I'm missing years me. before I was born. Yeah, but I do have a legitimate question. And I think this would be okay. Um, we're like really sticklers on here for everything, like always being like really positive and encouraging. Um, but I, I think I think this question will be okay. I just I'm in, interested in your answer. So you were talking about the God is able song, and mm-hmm. you know talking about which that's not Southern gospel, and then something else when you was talking about Southern gospel. Um, so. What if I posed the question to you? What is Southern Gospel? What is Southern Gospel? Uh, I'm so glad I'm not on the other end of that question. I want to hear a young person's, uh, a, a young, young person on the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, do you want like a dictionary definition? No, no, what no, I would, just, or like if you were, if you were someone my age asking me that, yeah. which version do you want? Okay. If someone my age had never heard Southern gospel Uh and they asked me to tell them what it was, I would say first, I would say four part harmony. And if they had no idea what that was, I would say, okay, there's four voices, high, medium, slightly low and very low. Um, (laughs) (laughs) um, And then then I would, I would tell them to go listen to the cathedrals. And I would tell them to go listen to the Statesman. Uh, I would tell them to go listen to Gold City. Um, And that's what I would say. Uh, I and people who know me know this. And it's awful for me to say because I sing in a mixed group. But I am a stickler for male four part (laughs) harmony. Uh, I love it. Uh, It's what I prefer to listen to. Um, Yeah. Yeah. But obviously, Southern gospel has more than just quartets, mm-hmm. uh, and there mm-hmm. are there are duets and trios and uh, everything else that fall under the category of Southern gospel. Southern gospel is a super wide genre uh, that I like to think has multiple subgenres in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yep. I agree. But I have this conversation with my wife all the time because she loves. Um, as far as secular music, she loved Rascal Flatts. Um, And so she loves the sound because they sound like Rascal Flatts and Dan and Shay, and they sing that style, but it's still Christian Southern gospel music. So she gravitates more toward them. Uh, Whereas, you know, I stay cathedrals, you know, old statesmen, Mm -hmm. stuff like that. That's what, but when I listen to secular music, I'm listening to, you know, uh, old, old, old country, um, and jazz. I love Michael Bublé. Yeah. I love Frank Sinatra, okay. Bing Crosby, Come on. Uh, Elvis, Johnny Cash, that kind of stuff. So obviously I'm going to be, I'm going to be, I'm going to gravitate more toward the older style four part mm-hmm. harmony. Um, I, I tell people there's something in it for everybody. Yeah. If right. you like country, there's that. If you like jazz, I, the Collingsworth, they do a yeah. lot of uh, hey, jazz-inspired arrangements. He, jazz uh, arrangement. Even Greater Vision sometimes does things yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, if you like just straight down the line stuff you would have heard in mm-hmm. in church, you know, probably 50 years ago, uh, Mark Trammell Quartet, uh, Gold City can do that. The cathedrals obviously did that. The statesmen, mm-hmm. they did that. Um, that's, that's what I would say. There's something yeah. in it for everybody. Right. Oh, yeah. You like some bluegrass in your cup? You got the primitives? You got Chuck Rodney Dan? Well, I used like to have some you bluegrass. Used to have the primitives. <laughs> yeah. You got, the, got Jeff Talbert and Primitive Road now, but still. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And yeah. And, and that's, I was just curious because um, now I'm, I definitely grav- gravitate old school. Like I'd gravitate old school. You did hit on statesman, but I'm like statesman, Blue Ridge Quartet, you know, back there in the golden era of Southern yeah. gospel. And then you move that and I, I am, I gravitate toward um, male quartets, male trios. However, I like everything. Um, mm-hmm. I, I love the bluegrass side. I love, mm-hmm. I, 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 you mentioned the sound and those that are on the, mm-hmm. uh, the Jordan family band, people like yeah. that. I, I enjoy I, 
you know, I, I agree. Southern gospel is such a, a broad genre of subgenres. It's kind of funny. I think if somebody asked me what is Southern gospel, I like what you said about the harmony and everything like that. But it's like Southern gospel. I know, I know it's Southern gospel when I hear it, and I know it ain't when I right. when I hear it that it ain't. You know, I mean, I don't. That's I just like that me and Jared have this conversation on the bus all the time because one of us, uh, Jared, Jared will be driving and he'll just be flipping through radio stations, and it is, it's uncanny because you can always tell there are two genres that you know exactly what it is without hearing any words. Southern gospel, praise and worship. You yeah. always know. You can tell by the way it's arranged. You can tell by how it sounds. Yep. That's You can say, oh, that's praise and worship. Oh, that's Southern gospel. You just you know it when you hear it. What's yeah. funny is a lot of groups nowadays are taking these praise and worship, what I say classics. I mean, you know, your awesome gods, goodness of mm -hmm. gods. Uh, 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 arise my love. I mean, I'm not trying to pick on triumphant or anything. No, no, uh, no. Others do it. I mean, I'm, you've done goodness of God. On we stage. do goodness of God. Yeah. I've seen uh, goodness of God. Goodness on stage. God. So, uh, I mean, like I, I love that we're taking one of my favorites right now is Anthem Edition's good God almighty. I'm a huge crowd. Oh, yeah. I'm wearing a Crowder shirt right now. Went and saw him and like cried Saturday, Saturday night seeing Crowder. But I love their arrangement of it because it sounds nothing like a Crowder song. I think Gold City's All My Hope sounds yeah. nothing like the Crowder version of it, but they're taking these things, and you can tell a distinct difference between the two. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like Southern Gospel when a Southern Gospel group does it. Right. You know it by how it sounds. Yep. Good deal. Uh, real quick, do we have any comments that we need to – all right, what we got here – Christy Needham, my sister-in-law, couldn't stand Southern Gospel. I talked to her and going to a Perry's concert and heard Dayton sing, and she's hooked now. Hey, wow. that that's it. You know, um, I am convinced that, um, you know, a lot of times when folks say, I don't like Southern Gospel, they really never heard it, or they, it's not yeah. been positively presented right. to them. You know, um, mm -hmm. maybe it was presented with some bias or something like that, but I, yeah, that's awesome. You, it, Young folks, especially, you take them to a Southern Gospel concert, and they generally get hooked. Right. Oh, yeah. Okay, now this is kind of a, this, this is a kind of an odd question um, from Neil. <laughs> Dayton, have you ever sung in Dayton, Ohio? I have. Well, there you <laughs> when go. I first, when I first they, came back to the Perrys, we did a weekend around the Ohio area, and we, we were in Dayton. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Bet you that crowd went nuts. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I think that's really about all. Let's see. We got one more. We're going to put up Beverly Darnell. Says, hello, Dayton from Carroll County, Tennessee, close to Bethel. Loved you singing with Renaissance. Thank you so much. That feels like a lifetime ago, but it really wasn't. <laughs> Thank you all so much for continuing to chime in. And now let me take a little seat. Let's see, where are we at on time? We're getting close to the hour mark. So Dayton, do not let us overstay our welcome with you. I am here as long as you want me here. Okay, very good. Well, y'all want to go another round of questions? Sure. We can. Uh, I on. had a really cool one that I thought of a while ago with the tie thing that you're very particular on your ties. Dimple or no dimple? Always a dimple. Always. Okay. If, I have, if I have to stand ones, but... in front of the mirror and finagle with my tie for an extra 20 minutes to get a good dimple, I will do it. I thought I knew that answer. because and, and, and I judge ties by how well they dimple. So I look for like... You, you yeah. know why I always wear bow ties? Because you don't have to tie them. You, just you don't have to, you don't have to do that. that. I, I get it. I get it. But... No, I, I look for a certain consistency when I'm if I'm going to buy a tie for myself. I look for a certain thickness and everything because I know it will it will dimple well. From the from the road brother himself, he takes forever to tie a tie. Yeah, Jason Jason kind of puts me to shame on how quickly he can change, but it's it's because Jason doesn't care how he looks. I mean, that's really what it is. I'm just trying to look the best. I mean, we're representing the Lord. We just get. <laughs> I look the best I can. Just, just pull out the verse that you should always give your best to God and just put it on his bunk. Right. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm <laughs> if I'm Jason right now, I'm, I'm hurting, man. I'm in the floor. <laughs> ah. Okay, I'm going to swap it from.
Jason's uh, tied choice to do if you weren't singing full time and you had to have a full time job, which I know you have done. What mm -hmm. would it be and why? Um. Well, OK, so this is I worked. OK, when I took the job with the Perry's, I worked at a warehouse in Memphis. Uh, we were shipping and receiving. Um, and so we, we unloaded trucks and we scanned labels and stuff like that. And it was by far the most laid back and relaxed job that I had, uh, other than singing. Um, so honestly, I'd probably be doing that full time. Nice. Now, I mean, it's in like Memphis. The, that's cool. The array mm -hmm. of answers always interests me. Yep. Yeah. Also, I really, I, I really enjoy landscaping. I did landscaping the first time yeah. before the Perry's. Uh, I did landscaping for uh, Pick Suite, which is the vegetable company. But they had a they own so much property in Bales, Tennessee, where they're located here, that they had to have a landscaping crew to keep up with all the property. So we, uh, yeah, we did landscaping for that, and I love landscaping because I love weed eating and mowing and trimming hedges and things like that. Plus, yeah. it's I love being out in the sun. Mm -hmm. I know I'm weird. I I, just, I love being outside. <laughs> me the and weed me. The sun hates me, so. I'm with Dayton. I will lay out and soak up the sun. 24 mm -hmm. So my question is kind of twofold. Um, do you, what is a secret talent you have that nobody knows about? And then do you play any instruments? <sighs> the secret talent one is hard. Um, <sighs> I have a really good memory. I do. I, I have a really good memory. And it's not necessarily like photographic memory, but if we had a conversation about something, oh, yeah. I can remember almost word for word what you told me. Mm -hmm. So that mm. like, for, like if I'm with my wife or even, you know, uh, when I was younger, when I was with my dad, he could, if he needed a part number for something he was working on, he could tell me the part number and I would remember the part number. Um, mm, Katie, wow. even now, will be like because she's she's a hairstylist and she she has to total up uh, her earnings at the end of the week uh, because she has to do her own taxes and things like that. Um, so she will tell me um, six eleven eighty six. Remember that and I'll be like okay. And then two hours later, what did I tell you? Remember six eleven eighty six. Okay, I got you. Um, <laughs> I, I have I'm pretty good memory. I guess that's secret mm -hmm. talent i don't even know if that, that probably doesn't even count i texted um, you about a song i i play guitar i texted you about a song yeah you did like three years ago and y'all have y'all like have brought it out three years Old later yeah and like i don't yeah. know how the heck you remembered <laughs> that but for some reason you just oh, yeah you said that i'm like okay that makes sense now we had a whole conversation uh, after when you texted that. We had a whole conversation on the bus, and that's why I remembered it, because there was multiple people talking about it at once. So uh, wow. I remembered. And actually, when uh, when Jason came on and he picked that song to be one of his songs, um, I said, oh, Evan's going to be happy because uh, you requested three it. Years that's like three years later. <laughs> that's wild. Yeah. I can't yeah. remember uh, what yesterday was. To be honest. With you. <laughs> um, All right. I, I play guitar for the second part of that question. I play guitar yeah. and I can play chords on a piano. I'm not great at piano, but I, I know we, enough to get myself in trouble. We've heard I know enough piano. to get myself in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Something uh, from the uh, peanut gallery here. Jason said, you know, every Perry song word for word that has ever been recorded. So, like right now, you could just bust out Fake singing news. God's Little People. Fake news. No, see, I, Libby actually tested me okay. because she's okay. always been super impressed <laughs> that I knew a lot of the songs that they've recorded. Yeah. And all, I like almost word for word and almost all of the parts, I could remember them. Um, and I told her why. Um, and this made her feel old. So I have to tell this story now that he brought it up. Um, so I told her we were, we were actually, we were getting dinner before we went to a concert and uh, me, her and Jason. And I told her, I'm like, you realize why I'm able to do that. Right. And she's like, no, I don't think you've ever told me. I said, okay, my dad had a five disc changer and I, I have almost every Perry's album that's ever been recorded. And so what I would do is I would take five off of a stack. 
I would take them out and put them in and press shuffle. And whatever song played, that's the song I listened to. And I'd go back for every song, all four parts, I would sing them. Um, and I would do that for the 10 or 12 albums that I had. Uh, and that's how I learned the parts and everything. Um, and she said, yeah, you just made me feel old. And I'm like, why? <laughs> and she said, cause I used to do that with like the Goodmans and the Hensons. And you're saying you did it with me. <laughs> <laughs> that's um, tough. But she tested me. She did. She said, um, uh, I was sitting, we were on the way to somewhere and I was sitting up there and she was sitting in the buddy seat and, um, she said, okay, I'm going to go through these songs and you tell me when you stop knowing them. Uh, and this is the day is the album that my knowledge stops at. So wow. anything pre, uh, okay. the Perry's. Okay. So like the Perry's family, I don't know much of that. Obviously okay. I know, like I remember the day and mm -hmm. rock of ages, yeah. the hits, uh, God's little people. I know those. Mm -hmm. Um, but most of the other ones up until this is the day and the Perry's quartet, era mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um okay that's where my knowledge is so i have a question on top of that um okay. what is your favorite album i guess from that because i'd say that as well is also from like this is the day to now this one um it's kind of the era that i've loved of the perry's mm -hmm. um, so what is your favorite album of that era my favorite all-time Perry's album, and this is a cop-out, so I'll give you two answers. Okay. <laughs> My favorite all-time Perry's album is Remembering the Happy Goodmans. Yes. Yes. That was um, so good. That's my favorite album. But one that wasn't them paying tribute to someone else, This Is the Day had a lot of, like... A lot of good stuff on bangers it. Bangers on it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Had a lot of mm -hmm. hits for them. Um, <clears throat> Change Forever. Yes. Life of Love. I mean, there's uh, really Which there's, one there's the too one many good albums to it. pick one. There's one with a sweet tea jar on it. The Come Thirsty. Come Thirsty. Come thirsty. That one has. Nope. I like Almost Morning as well. Almost That's Morning's good. my favorite. That's that a good through the night. Through the night. Hit after hit after I think it's underrated. Yes, absolutely. Um, what's the one uh, with I Got a Hold of God this morning on it? That one's really good too. Um, that through the night. No, through the no, night. That, is it no. through the night? I think it's through the I don't night. know. So you're you're <laughs> you're messing with me now too. Go, I could go on for days of just because I'm the same way. I would as a kid would just mom collected all the CDs, so I just pop them in and learn oh, all yeah. of Tracy's part, and then put the next one in, learn all of Tracy's part, pop the next one in, and do it all. So that's that's really why mm -hmm. seeing there and was what's a funny. What's funny to me now looking back at doing that is that okay so if if someone had never heard the perrys before like god forbid jason leaves or, or whatever and the new the new guy came to me and was like i need to learn all the perry songs i would tell them to do exactly that yeah but what's funny is when you were doing it when i was you know seven eight nine ten i didn't realize that i was learning <laughs> As I was doing it, I was doing it because I was having fun doing it. And it was Southern yeah. gospel and mm -hmm. I love Southern gospel. And I, Oh, I can sing these parts. Cool. Let me learn all of them. Back yeah. then it was for the, for the fun of it. The fun uh, of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. We have maybe another question or two from the uh, comments. And this comes from inside the house of uh, some of our hosts, but Robert Bradford yeah. asked, where do you see yourself in 10 years? 10 years is a long way away. It um, is. Mm -hmm. Career wise, I hope that in 10 years, Libby is still singing. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I hope mm -hmm. that I'm still with the group. Um, yeah. Life wise, you know, I hope I have a, a, a kid or two. Um, <laughs> other than that, I, I'm honestly, I'm pretty happy with where I'm at currently. Um, so if everything was the same, 10 years from now, as it is right now, I would be perfectly content. Perfect. Great awesome. answer. Brian Park asks, have you ever written any songs? Um, not, not any that I'm proud of. I've got that same notebook. Oh my gosh. I wrote the most stupid bluegrass song when I was like 
a junior in high school. And I, I've the other day I was looking him through my Bible and I found the lyrics to it. And I was like, why did I write this? Right. It's, oh, it was, mm -hmm. it's one of those that even if I was listening to it in concert, I'd be like, what was the writer thinking? <laughs> he wasn't is what it is. <laughs> oh, that's one of those B sides. Um, <laughs> we probably, we may have a, one more round. I know we're probably getting close to a, uh, a wrapping up spot, but Dayton, we usually turn the tables. Um, and I know you know a couple of these a whole lot better than you know me, but sometimes we turn the tables and to the artist. And any questions you'd like to ask all of us who have been peppering you with questions for the last hour? Okay. Um, I feel like I feel like it's going to be a lot easier for me to ask questions to Evan and Avery just because I know them sure. better than I know the other mm -hmm. two of you. So I'll save them for last. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Riley. Yes. Um, gosh, this is hard. Um, <laughs> what What was your favorite part about the cruise? I saw you walking around. Mm. I was supposed to get a picture with you, and I didn't. But um, what was your favorite part <laughs> about the cruise? And what is your favorite part? I guess it's a two-part question. What is your favorite part about attending Southern Gospel concerts uh, just in general? Um. For the cruise, I got to hang out with a lot of younger people that love this music and just stand around the piano and sing. And that's something I don't usually get to do. So that was probably yeah. my favorite part. Out, obviously, I love the mu music and going and hearing people, but that was probably like the highlight for me. And when cool. going to concerts, I guess um, the, the message in the song is obviously there's some entertainment in there too, too uh, just yes. some, sometimes. But um, I don't want to be all super spiritual and all that. But um, no. but I I enjoy, I do enjoy the fellowship even when I go to singings. You know, talking to people and getting to know people, and mm -hmm. that's kind of like my outlet because I don't have like a lot of people living near by me that I hang out with. So when I go to concerts, it's like going to see friends. Oh, yeah, so I guess that I love the music, and then I also love that aspect of the community too. That's Unless awesome. that person weirdly walks up to you and just introduces himself. <laughs> yeah, that I was, a, I've kind of come out of Michelle a little bit, but back then <laughs> I was just scared half to death. Well, I was like, who is that? <laughs> but, that's, that's how yeah. me and, they, if you've never heard that story, uh, me and Riley were at a triumphant and Karen Peck concert. I think the inspirations were there as well. No, and, uh, prim primitives. Primitives. Yeah. Okay. That was it. And like, I just walked three years up to, ago. Because I walked up to, I, I had no clue, like, kind of who he was, but I recognized him off social media. I just walked up to him, and I was mm -hmm. like, hey, you're that guy who records all them gospel concerts. And looking back on it, that was really awkward, which anyone who knows <laughs> me, I'm the most awkward human being who's ever, who God has ever put on this planet. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. No. But. Okay, so, Scott. Yes. Um. You don't have to answer this, but you you made a mention about my age. Uh, uh -huh. So before I ask this, how, how old are you? I'm 50. So you're 50. Okay. Yes. So after, have you been a Southern Gospel fan your whole life? Yes. Okay. Um, is that open end question or just was you, were you going somewhere else with that? I, I was going somewhere else. I've, Go ahead. You know, Keep going. Okay. Keep going. So if you've been a Southern Gospel fan your whole life and you're 50 years old, Yes. What about this music makes you continue listening to it? Oh, Ooh. that is a excellent question. That, so, okay, mean. because and for me, it, just in case you flip the question around on me, for me, I'll be very honest. Um, singing this music and listening to it my entire life, there have been moments where I'm like, "Can I listen to anything other than this?" Um, so yeah. I am. I'm asking you after 50 years, what keeps you listening to this music? Sure. So growing up, I had a family that sang. So I was immersed from the very beginning and introduced. And, and I grew up like my first real recollections were from early eighties. So, you know, you started getting into like the heyday of that uh, cathedrals group. And then along came the, Ivan, Brian, Mike, and Tim, mm -hmm. Gold City, and, and, and through there. And mm -hmm. so that's where I lived and came up through. Um, 
I was big fans of the Neelands. I was big fans of the Perry family, as you referred to, and, and through those years. And, and, and I enjoyed it, um, I guess, because I was supposed to, because it was the family deal. You know, mm -hmm. music was the family deal. You just love Southern gospel. And, and then as I grew older and grew in my faith, and really, you know, as a young person, you sing the, you, I, you know, I could hear harmony. So I, I love the music. I love the hooks. I love, I love the, the, it was fun. It was fun to sing. Well, then as I grew in my faith, I started listening to what those words were saying. Yes. And, and I love all kind of music. I mean, I listen to some secular music, you know, I, mm -hmm. but, and I love Christian music. I love Christian music. But there is nothing to me that has the meat in the message, like when you listen to Southern gospel music. Um, and it ministers to me. Um, I, I, if I, they didn't have such things as ADD when I was a kid. They just whipped you, you know, when, right. you, uh, when you acted up. <laughs> but if, if I would have been the poster child for ADD. So sometimes a 40-minute sermon, whew, I can get out there and my mind goes and I'm right. a squirrel, you know. But in that three-minute, four-minute song, I have had so many sermons, many sermons preached to me and things hit just the right way. Like I said, there's something about the, the message of the music of Southern gospel that I don't think you find any, I'm, I'm not putting down contemporary and the praise right. and worship, but I just don't hear the meat and I don't right. hear the message from the word, from the word of God. I mean, yes. so many songs are just taking from, from scripture, you know, just from the word of God and it, and it ministers to me and I'm hooked. And, and, and that's, that's what keeps bringing me back to the table. That's awesome. And to tell you, because you, you may mention earlier um, what, how I would describe Southern gospel and you kind of mentioned because, you know, I'm younger and, um, and, and you're, you're older than me. So, um, yeah. but if you had asked me the question that I had just asked you, my answer would have been almost identical. Awesome. Um, which I think just tells you, how awesome this music is yes and the connection that this music can have with the person that listens to it absolutely i remember and can't see him well i'll let you see him but we have producers sitting over here helping run the show but uh, i remember going to louisville kentucky with jason and sitting in the middle of what 10,000 12,000 people sitting there and just weeping like a baby because yes. there's a song was delivered at that moment and something that i was going through that nobody else knew about but it yep. ministered and spoke straight to my heart and i had a moment with the lord thanks to the music yes it's awesome yep awesome okay so evan and avery <sighs> Are we still frozen, by the way? No, I... I you know, okay, cool. cool. Okay. So, oh, no. you can't say old-fashioned altar, Evan. <laughs> okay, fine. I'll pull What is your favorite one. Perry song? Oh, gosh. Um, for nostalgic reason, for listening reason, I mean... That's about all I listen to. I guess I'd say, for nostalgic reason only... Wish I could have been there because that's mm. the first song I ever got to sing with the Perry's first song I, that, that the day that like I knew I wanted to be a bass singer type deal. One of those. But I guess just to listen to and just for sure, like, man, this this song always is awesome. Old fashioned altar. But uh, um, um, this old center <laughs> testifies is is good. Hands down. Probably my favorite song. The Perry's do. probably my favorite Tracy song of all time, too. Yeah. I would probably say almost morning. That one has gotten me through some dark times. Uh, even on the good days, it's still good. Oh, yeah. You know, the, yeah. there's the promise that morning, morning is coming. Um, gonna, I'm just going to show you how much of a Perry's nerd I am. Um, but I still, on a regular basis, I just put the Perry's on shuffle. Yeah. And obviously, when you've been listening to it as much as I have, for as long as I have, mm -hmm. um, there are songs that you skip because you know you're not going to enjoy them as much as something else. Yes. Almost morning is one that I almost never skip. No, <laughs> it's how good so it is. Um, 
another one kind of like with Evan this well not nostalgic reasons but kind of nostalgic reasons is damascus road yeah. That oh, yeah. was when, so when i was so small that you couldn't see me over the pulpit my parents would sit me in this metal folding chair so you like everybody in the church could see me over the pulpit and we would sing together mm. damascus road and i got to sing libby's little part of Ivan. yeah and i was probably i mean big enough to form sentences five six right around kindergarten and like that song will always be special to me because I remember standing in that little metal folding chair singing with my parents. Yeah. Another one that had just come to mind too, because I was going through some more because I hate answering like so abruptly. Everywhere I go is another song that like I always like. That's one of those where you set unskippable. Everywhere I go was one of the first songs I ever sang based on. So that's always one that I, I love too. Newer that's getting up in my ranks, and you may see me at concerts just about getting Baptocostal is I'm just warming up. That little Pentecostal uh, fire me. And I'm like, yeah, I'm song. just warming up. <laughs> by the way, by the way, that is our next radio single. And awesome. me yeah. and Jason went in and uh, recut that. So it is the current group singing it right. that will be released to the radio. Oh, I'm so I proud of Jason. He finally learned how to sing. And yeah. I like <laughs> I like who I could have been that Jared does oh, yes. because that's my testimony. For years, I was like, I don't have this cool testimony. I mean, I was a deacon's kid that got drugged to church and drugged to singings and drugged to revivals. And it was like, well, then I just got saved because I realized I was yep. a sinner. I wasn't saved miraculously from drugs or alcohol or this crazy mm. wild story. And I was like, well, mm. mine won't touch anybody. And it was like, no, but you were saved from who you could have been. And so right. I love, I love that. Cause that's me. I, you know, right. we actually, we sang that song for the first time that I've sung it with them. Uh, we sang it last Sunday at um, Josh Frank's church. Uh, oh, Cause he, he has a, there's a portion in our program where Libby, almost always expects Jared to sing at least one song. Um, and he didn't want to sing God did. So he fired the track to that and hmm. we did it. It's yeah. such a good song. song. No. Jason, I don't mean to make this my interview, but Jason put a comment to what's my favorite Elvis song. And I'll say this. I say it to everyone. I don't have a favorite. Honestly, the only time I listen to Elvis is to a practice for a show. <laughs> That's legit. Go. And now so I don't know. have a favorite song. Now, you know, well, as we come in for a landing, guys, uh, my co-host, if y'all have uh, a, a last short question you want to get, go ahead and get that loaded up in your in your pop gun ready to fire. But uh, I do want to take just a second because uh, we definitely appreciate Dayton spending the evening with us. We appreciate the Perry's have been wonderful mm -hmm. share about this mm -hmm. interview coming up and have partnered with us. So, y'all, if you go to Perry's Ministries. Dot com. That is the website, perrysministries.com. You can find the Perry's tour information, find out where they're going to be. You can go to their store and shop all this wonderful music we've been talking about all night long. Uh, shop the, the latest release. And also, you can find the booking information because I know the Perry's would love to come to your church or to your venue to sing. And uh, anything else you would like to talk about or promote as far as Perry's goes? Um, like I said, uh, our our next single, uh, it's I think it's supposed to go to radio the twenty fourth uh, of this month. Um, but it, it it will be warming up, so just be listening for that. And if you have a, a local station that you listen to frequently where you're at, call them and request it. Um, that helps us out. And um, yeah, if we if we're close to you, if you get on the website and you see that we're close to you, come out and see us. And uh, we would love to have you. Love to see you. Um, yeah. Absolutely. It. And talking about all these hits, um, if I'm remembering correctly, and I think it's the Wednesday night of National Quartet Convention this year, the board has put together kind of a hits yeah. night. Uh, uh, and, and, and it's like all kind of top Wait. groups where you're going back and bringing back and singing the mm -hmm. hits that the groups are. are and y'all are on that lineup. So that's going to be an awesome mm -hmm. time. Looking mm -hmm. forward to that. I'm um, looking forward to it as well. I was going to plug Perry's wise. Jared mm -hmm. and his wife, Lindsay, do a lot of like screen printing shirts, cups, earrings. Yes. And they're on Facebook, JNL Living. They have awesome. I have a bunch of shirts that they have made for me. So go and yeah. support Jared and Lindsay's small business there. 
Absolutely. Um, definitely support that. And, and going back to that Wednesday night, you know, a lot of times at NQC, you kind of pick like what times and what moments during the night you may move back and go to the tables and go talk to people. I think that Wednesday night is going to be sitting in the seats for um, <laughs> five to six hours. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that, that's going to be a fantastic night. Well, partners, do y'all have any last could round Jay- questions for Jason? Me? Pull up Jason's comment. That's twice. Yeah, sorry, I didn't. I didn't mention that. It once it goes to radio, it, it will also be available on all media platforms. So you can okay. go and download it, Apple right. Music, Spotify, whatever you. I use. I was meaning his last comment. This this last one down here. So apparently we have a little rival a rivalry oh, um, yeah. here because uh, because if I'm not mistaken, at one time you did a podcast, Dayton. Because I listened. I did. To I was actually more. I was telling Riley and Scott that before we all got mm-hmm. on. And then I know Jason and I think Tony does theirs. Yes. And then there's this one. So there's there's a little bit of like a, you know, a little mm-hmm. squabble going on right now. So which one is your favorite, Dayton? Between those three? I just I prefer my favorite yeah, I podcast. wish you would be one of those three. Uh, between these three, uh, I'm sorry, mm-hmm. Jason and Tony, but I, I, I'm going to have to give it to these. Hey, good answer. Good and answer. Okay. Yeah. Simply because. And it's well, it's 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 yeah. <laughs> it didn't work. Why? I'm on here. Um, I've been on their podcast, I think, three times at this point. Um, so it's not just because I'm on here. It is because I, I really, I, I appreciate and I believe in what y'all do. Um, I think it is so cool that you reach out to young artists and, and encourage them and allow people who listen to y'all and uh, people who are interested to learn more about the young artists. Um, because, you know, I'm young uh, and I've seen uh, just in the years that I've been listening, I've seen young artists come and go uh, and you, you may, they may end up with another group. You may never hear from them again. Uh, and you never had the opportunity to learn anything about them. Uh, so what y'all do is fantastic for getting to know uh, these young artists and just promoting them and promoting the music. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. awesome. And thank you to the Perrys. They, as yes. long as I've been following the Perrys, Libby has always been an encourager to yep. young people. Yes. And you guys, uh, you and Jason and Jared are all just yep. so encouraging and so welcoming. I mean, you guys are always, you have a smile on your face mm-hmm. and want to talk to the young people. So. And, and Libby has pulled me on stage more than any person in the world. I mean, full on concerts, I'll show up in a t-shirt and blue jeans and she'll just be like, come on. So that's why I've learned to dress up a little bit. <laughs> around because You never know. <laughs> you never know. You never know. Never know. Well, thank you so much for that uh, encouragement on your side. Dayton. That means the world to us for y'all to, uh, to, to, uh, enjoy what we do um yes. and, and it's, it's been a joy for us we we just we just love all of our young fans and young artists and thankful for this community any closing parting shots my friends I think um i got one go ahead um, so you talked a little bit about um y'all's new single but uh, are y'all working on any new music with just a full album on it so well, we currently um Currently, we are getting together songs for an album. And actually, we've gotten all the songs. Um, people have sent us a lot of songs. And the process we're doing now um, is narrowing down our lists and combining those lists and trying to make some sort mm-hmm. of sense out of four different people's preferences. Sure. Um, so that's what we're that's what we're doing now. And um I think within the next couple of weeks, we're going to be kind of comparing uh, the list that we've narrowed down and trying to make sense of that. So we will be putting out an album um, once all of that gets squared away. Well, we'll be looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. Always great to have that new music coming. And Dayton, I thank you so much for sharing the evening with us. Uh, It's been a blast for us. I hope it's been uh, tolerable Mm -hmm. for you as well. Oh, this was was awesome. I've been looking (laughs) forward to it all day, and y'all did not disappoint. Well, fantastic. And if you got just a second, hang with us on the other side, and we'll give our goodbyes. But to our watchers and our listeners, thank you so much for joining us for Episode 13 of Southern Gospel Forward. And if you'll come back and be with us, we're going to do it again a few couple of weeks down the road. But again, if you don't mind, share, share what you're watching on Facebook and go to that YouTube channel, SBM Studios, and please, please, please subscribe. We sure could use it. 
but uh, what in the world are y'all doing? No, no, <laughs> we're waving goodbye. Yeah. Oh, you're waving goodbye. All right. Well, look, let's get out. Rattle up the ponies, producer Jason. We'll get out of here. God loves you too.